Ilochoti 
Close to 
will be out in good time. So, Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, it says, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan and go and possess the land which the Lord your God said you possess it. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are inspired every time we open this word. There is something that grabs our souls. There is something that inspires us, that directs, Father, that gives us a pulse in our life. Father, we know there is a precious hope that is in the scriptures and there is power that read, wrote the word can come out to visit whosoever reads with understanding and inspiration. Father, as we minister from this word, page us with the high soap of your blood, Father, in the waters of separation of the word, cleanse us from all sins, and Father, from everything that you don't like in our lives, make us more like you, and give us, Lord, Father, that nature that is, makes us partakers of divine nature. Prepare us, Father, for the great day that is coming, where we shall be changed in the moment the twinkle of an eye, where we shall meet you in the air. We come to everything to ends in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, you may be seated. Here, Joshua is, is telling the people, as God has told him, um, that they should prepare their victuals and be ready. God does not deal with unready people, with unprepared people. When God is about to do something, it needs a certain level of preparation. It needs a certain level of readiness. He says, for you shall cross over this Jordan. And the Jordan that he's talking about is an overflooded Jordan. My subject today is uh, the benefits of diligent preparation. As a believer, for you to gain anything from God or to reach certain levels in your prayer life, in your spiritual life, or to see certain manifestations of the grace of God, it takes consecration and preparation in the closet. You may not um, jump the process and see a life that flourishes or that is effulgent with the graces of God without um, preparing. And every day, you must prepare. We see in this life, it's, it's uh, full of preparations. We prepare when we are planting, uh, farming. We prepare the ground. We prepare for exams. We prepare for journeys. We prepare for weddings. We prepare for the arrival of a child. We prepare when we are migrating. We prepare. People prepare for for matches, they prepare for races, but they prepare. I was preparing a sermon myself. I don't stand here without preparation. It is said about Martin, St. Martin, that they could not bring him to the pulpit without him thoroughly prepared and enveloped with the power and glory of God. We prepare for retirement. We prepare for rain season. We prepare every day. We prepare um, our food. We prepare our blankets. We prepare uh, for, for school, we prepare for work. So life is about preparation every time. This time we are preparing for a drought to be ready. And as a child of God, prepare for the rapture. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Prepare to be a ready sanctuary for God. So we, we, we prepare for interviews. We prepare. And Joshua 3 verse 5, it says, Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Meaning God, for him to do great wonders, they had to do something themselves. They had to prepare. They had to sanctify themselves. God cannot bless upon sin. If there is filth in your life, there is no way God can just bring his power upon you. There is a preparation that is needed. So the Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 27, verse 6, that so Jotham became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord is God. So you become something when you, you, you spend time, invest time preparing. You can't jump the process. There is a hidden, where you are hidden from prominence, hidden from people in solitude where God is preparing you, shaping you to be a better version of yourself. There was a time when Paul received the message and uh, God met him, but for three years or so, he was in the desert of Arabia preparing, searching the scriptures. He could not just come and speak the word. He had to compare scripture. He had to prepare. Don't rush to flower in life. Be ready to be in the milling process where God removes all impurities in your life. So preparation is key. So as a Christian, 
Be ready to prepare in prayer. Be ready to prepare in study. Be ready to prepare in listening to the word. The Bible says in Luke chapter 14, verse 28, for which one of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the costs whether he is sufficient to finish it. So if you are going to build something, if you are going to embark on something, you need enough preparation. You, you need a bit of quantities. You need to be ready. So now in the countries, uh, in the European countries and in developed world, America West, they are even preparing bomb shelters uh, because they know that there is a war that is coming that is going to be a nuclear war. They are pre preparing, as the Bible says, they will say, let's hide in dens and rocks to hide from the wrath of the, of the Lamb. So in the days of, um, of the book of Kings, there, there was a time where God says, prepare, make the valley full of dishes. So God was going to bring the water, but he was not going to bring the water on unprepared people. Your blessing is coming, your victory is coming, but it can come on unprepared life. And no one will do the preparation for you. The pastor is not there to prepare for you. You as an individual, no one eats for you, no one breathes for you. So no one prepares for you. You must be diligent and ready. Prepare to meet the Lord. Um, there will come a time where each one will answer before the Lord. Let's prepare for that time if we are wise. There will come times that we cannot handle. Let's prepare for that. There will come seasons of distress and grief. Let's prepare while we have the energy, while we have the presence of God now, while we have the word of God now. In the dream of Pharaoh, it typified that, it expressed that by showing that Later, there were seven years of plenty like we are enjoying now in the word with all the scriptures, with all the preaching freely. But then there comes a season in life where the thin cows will come and swallow the, the things that were good in your life. So you prepare for that moment and hedge whatever you have so that when those things come, they won't touch what you have now. When your season comes, it must not find you unprepared. When your season comes, it must not find you unprepared. But invest time making right with God. It takes time to, make, to know God. It takes time to be deep in the roots of the message. It takes time to go through the whole message, uh, through the tabs, through the Bible. It takes time, but don't lose that time of preparation. The Bible says that prepare thy work without. Make it fit for thyself in the field. Afterwards, build yourself a, a house. You don't just start a, a big thing without preparation. You must have the foundation. You must have the groundbreaking. Like that man who made the, the, the Sydney Bridge when they said it was impossible. He had to prepare and blow out the loose sand. He, he took time making a good ground until he got the solid rock. If you are going to invest on things eternal, you must find a solid place to build your hopes. That is on Christ, the solid rock, other ground is seeking sand. So even God, when he says about our hearts and our soul, he says, a body is thou prepared me. Your, soul, your heart or your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So be prepared because if we prepare our houses, how can we have God staying in a house that is not prepared? In a house that is not swept? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, as it is written, I has not seen, he has not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. So, um, those that love him, God has prepared. He says, I go and prepare a place. So if God takes time preparing something that will be great for you, take time with him every day. You can even tithe your time and say two hours something is just my tithes to God where I give quality time, not lamb sacrifice. Then I give him also offerings of another three hours or so. Like Susanna Wesley, we used to get three hours or so with praying with each child. So you must go through the process. We are living in a time where people want shortcuts. They want to be great overnight. They want to just rise and do something for God. It takes time to qualify and to be equipped and to be usable by God. It takes time in the closet, in the secret. So pre there is the preparation where God prepares you. 
before adoption because in adoption he has to test you the inspector has to check you if you are loose about something there is no ceiling if you, something is not right in your life God does not fill you he doesn't give you your rank as a believer you, you, you continue under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father but there is two ways of preparation where God prepares you through trials and tribulations and circumstances that he allows but there is also another way where you prepare yourself where voluntarily you, 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 you commit your ways to the Lord when you wake up you don't lose that morning you consciously say I depend on you Lord so prepare for the times that you have no control over there comes times even the time of your living this earth. Live today as if it's your last day on earth. There comes a time when the, our churches will be closed and the squeeze will happen. Let's prepare now. Now success, it is said that it's where preparation and opportunity meets. Many of you are crying for God to give you open doors, but you are not ready for those doors. The current version of you is not equipped enough you don't know enough of God and you have not enough of God in you to sustain integrity when you are raised to the new level where you are going. Benjamin Franklin said that by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So you must be able to prepare. If you are going to song lead, prepare, pray the whole night. You can't just be moving around and talking, then you come and say, let's, let's sing this song. If you are going to preach, prepare, be ready. If you are coming for service, say, Lord, speak to me, prepare. You find yourself reading the scripture that the pastor is going to read. It's the Holy Spirit preparing you and making you ready. You know, there are the five P's that proper planning prevents poor performance. So I don't want to be standing here repeating the same sermons. And I don't want you to stand here repeating the same songs or repeating the, the, the same chords or what. Prepare and be ready. Um, uh, you can't be... Uh, of course, you can repeat the same amens. It's okay. But uh, you see, in the days of Esther, she prepared herself with, not with her own things. She says what was provided, what the king, the chamberlain wanted, is what she used to prepare. When you are preparing, you don't use your own understanding. You use only what God gave you. By the message, it has everything that you need for the rapture. From cover to cover, believe, even the paradoxic part of the message. She was told that, how do you know that maybe for such a time as this, you came to the world? Meaning that through her childhood, and through her looks and everything, through her courage, God was preparing her to be useful in delivering the whole generation of Jews. You are being prepared to be useful in your generation and you must not fail. This generation in heaven is banking on you as a young man. Heaven is banking on you as a sister that you live a life of impact. He's preparing you for greater heights. So we sing the song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary a sanctuary that is not an empty sanctuary, not an ichabod sanctuary, but that is pure and holy, tried and true. If you are going to be tried, you know we sing that song, but not, not many of us want to be tried. We want to be true only. But God we will take you that through it all you learn to trust him. So prepare with prayer. A prayerless generation will never be victorious. You cannot always depend on a gifted man's prayer, on your pastor's prayer. Hit your knees on the ground and learn to speak to God. Forget about the clock. Forget about your daily program. Your, that prayer is enough a daily program. It's enough to take you to realms of the presence of God. That's where victory is born. When a man is alone with God, that's where victory is born. When we're in church, it's just one hour or so. But when we're alone there, it makes you come as a charged powerhouse. Someone who can speak to mountain. Someone who can say rivers move this way. You become a restored, anointed son of God. So prepare your heart to host the presence of God. Cleanse that heart. Cleanse. Just save the eyes up and say wash me in the blood of the lamb and I'll be white. It takes time to destroy dirty habits. It takes commitment. It takes this connection from Laodicea in connection with heaven, it takes a closer walk with God. So, uh, plow, it says, break your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. 
there must be a constant thirst in you. If that thirst dies, you are spiritually dead. There must be a constant yearning in you. There must be something in you calling for more of God. Whatever you got, what you have of God, there is more to get. Wherever you got that testimony, there is more to get. Whatever you got that healing, there is more to get. Whatever you got that breakthrough, there is more. It means it's a shadow of a shadow of a shadow, but you can plunge into the powers of God. Prepare by listening to the tapes, listening to the word of God. If the tapes are boring to you, probably heaven will be boring also for you. If the tapes are boring or the sermons are boring, what is really appetizing you? It means something has taken the control tower or the throne of your heart. You must, you know, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Daddy, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed. It, other, you know, it means, in other words, other Christians, it's shameful how they are. They, they, they are ashamed because they don't study. Knowing about the word of God makes you know possibilities that can happen in your life. But that ignorance in your life makes you blind of what you can be and what you are born to be. Then he says, till I come, give attendance to reading and to exhortation and to doctrine. Give attendance. That Bible needs you to attend. That, that, that the sermons need you to attend. So winning needs you to be available. Be available when God wants to use you. I know people want to be available when they want to use God. Lord, I want to use, I want a car. Lord, I want a house. All those things are fine. But the, God also has his has desire. You can't just push your desires on God and forget his desires on you. As a young person, be so close to God while you have strength to worship him. Don't come to God when you are now so tired and worn and torn. You now want to read the Bible when your eyes cannot see anymore. You, know, you, you, you now want to, to work for God when you have no power anymore. You want to now speak for God when you have no more teeth anymore. So we're in the prime days of your life. Give your, the, the Bible says, it says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. There is the way of the Lord in your life. Let him have his way in your life. Prepare the way of the Lord. There is a, there is a preparing. Don't waste your mornings. As I said last time that each morning is pregnant with potentials. If you lose the day in the morning stage, you are losing the rhythm for the whole day. Because as you start the day, you declare what shall happen in the day. Don't even start declaring when you are already down and you are saying, Lord, restore. Start by saying, this is my day. This is the day that Lord has made. I'm going to come home with a good report. I'm going to come home. The day will end with victories. And when you shape the day, the, the devil is too late to try and put one or two things in your life. So prepare for the end times. No matter how we love this earth that we are living in, it's going to end. Everything is falling apart. This world is falling apart. Scriptures cannot be broken. There is coming a better civilization, a faith civilization. There is coming a shaking time where everything shall be shaken. Now, spiritual victory comes only to those who are prepared for battle. The, the Bible says actually that with your shoes prepared, shortened with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So there's a preparation going on. We are preparing for the rapture. And when you prepare, God will also prepare a way for you. You also prepare for you your testimony. So build your capacity for your coming season. When that season comes, there's no time to start learning. When a vacancy comes, it's not time to go and do an engineering course. When a vacancy, when a door opens, it's not time to go and write an exam. You have to present what you are preparing all this time. When God says, this is your season, when a visitation comes, you must be ready. When your season comes, you must be seasoned. So God is using this pain to prepare you for great things. Be ready. Don't be a cry baby. When you are passing through a pipe, when you are passing through seasons of distress, rejoice even in its sorrow, even in its circumstances, knowing that he that has started a good work in you shall finish it. God has no half work. God does not leave you. He has not brought you this far to leave you. So because Ephesians 2 verse 10, we are God's workmanship. 
created in Christ to do the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God prepared you that by your making, you knew you were going to fit the purpose. Your uniqueness was designed to fit your unique space in the body of Christ. So you are beautifully unique. Don't be like somebody. Don't try to fit where you don't fit. There is your slot. There is your position. There is your anointing that is prepared that this is for brother so and so. This is for sister so and so. And no one can substitute you. No one can take your place. So be diligent and vigilant and prepare and say, Lord, in my days I don't want to be a mediocre person. I want to reach heights. There is the shaping of a vessel. When God is shaping you, be be malleable, be there, be present to say, Lord, I will live the way you want me to live. The vessels in the temple were shaped for their purpose. Some vessels were carrying coals so they could not be plastic because they were carrying hot coals. So they were shaped to carry the coals. Some vessels were shaped to carry the wine. Some vessels were shaped to carry the water. Some vessels were shaped to clean the menorah, to clean the candlesticks. So there are some people who are shaped as burden bearers. Some vessels were shaped to carry the ashes. Some vessels were shaped to carry uh, the blood of the lamb. So you are shaped to carry. God molded you specifically that you can carry what you are passing through. So when God prepares you, definitely it hurts. But let me tell you the toils of the road will seem nothing when you get to the end of the road. Prepare for the Holy Ghost baptism. Prepare for your blessing. Prepare for your breakthrough. Prepare for your visitation. Prepare for your next level. Your next level demands a more prayerful you. A more Holy Ghost filled you. A more obedient you because total obedience will entitle you to the token. So God allows adversity to mold you and shape you. When you come to the potter's house, be ready to be broken and made. When God picks the pieces of your life, he doesn't do trin upon well, uh, work. He doesn't do sellotape work. He molds you and you become a better version of yourself. So the challenges that you are facing, they are, you are challenged for a purpose. God measures challenges so that they bring the best. Something is slipping in you. It must be awakened by challenges. The more you are challenged, the more you grow to the stature to meet the challenge of the hour. You have what it takes to meet the challenge of the hour. So don't complain about your challenges, but rejoice that heaven has trusted me that I can handle this marriage pressure. I can, work, I can handle this work pressure. I can work, handle this academic pressure. I can handle these afflictions. Prepare with the afterlife. We shall not always meet like this. One of these days we will join, we will gain the portals in the land beyond the river where it shall be joy forevermore. Where we shall see our Savior even as he is. He says in Revelation chapter 19 that um, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to the Lamb um, for, the, uh, for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. Um, how does she make herself ready? As Esther did, unto her was granted. You can't make yourself ready because your own works won't make you ready. Your own abilities won't make you ready. But when you read this verse and end there, you think that you can make yourself ready. But here is a combination of works and grace. Works there says she has made herself ready. But grace has provided what makes her able to make herself ready. The grace says, unto her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. So she made herself ready by taking what is provided. Not by trying her gymnastics. She just says, without you, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. So like Esther, who took what was provided, now being unready is a crisis. We must not be in the mud of sin. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. It's a time where we ought to be in our ought to be condition. It's a time 
We want to be speaking things into existence. It's a time. We want to be in the power of the third pool. It's a time where we must be seeing the full unfolding of the seven seal. It's a time of manifestation of sons and daughters of God. In the time of the Exodus, you could not make yourself ready except by using what was provided. You had to use the blood in the lintel. No matter how circumcised you were, no matter how good you were, no matter how Israeli you were, if you did not do what was provided for you to be ready, you are going to die. So there won't be any time to get ready if you are not ready. There will come a time when he that is filthy is filthy still. There will come a time when he that is righteous is righteous still. Before it's too late, turn to Christ Jesus. It doesn't help to say I'm in the message. This is not a religion or denomination. You have to be in Christ. You must have the same experience that our fathers had. You must have the same power of the Holy Ghost. By Acts 238, you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin and then be filled with the same Holy Ghost that filled Paul, that filled Irenaeus. The same jar that filled empty vessels must fill everyone that is longing and hungering and thirsting for the deeper things of God. So the Bible says, um, long before... Uh, it's not the Bible, it's a quote that says long before Zacchaeus could, could, couldn't see Jesus the tree was already planted for you to meet his need before you even started longing for God the deep that we have shows that there is a deep somewhere to answer to that deep before you even desired to receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost was already hanging over you. Before you even desired to live right, there was a power somewhere that was magnetizing you. Something keeps holding you and drawing you constantly. God is not preparing the blessings for you. He is preparing you for the blessings. Blessings are already ready, but you are not ready. He says, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the spirit of truth shall come, when you reach that level of oneness with the spirit of God, you are now omnipotent. You are now invisible. invincible. Because when two omnipotents meet, something is going to shake. Now the butterfly, for it to pass, to become, the caterpillar for it to become a, a butterfly, it has to, it can dodge the process. You know how a caterpillar loves eating, but it has to leave that eating and say, I'm now focusing on something bigger than my appetites. Amen. Then it becomes something that can fly across, that is not limited, that can reach uh, 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 some, uh, above some boundaries. So we increase our spiritual preparedness. The foolish virgins were not prepared enough. They were half prepared. They had some oil one time but it ran out. But when you prepare, you need to have enough for the entire journey. That's why God tells uh, Elijah that he rise and eat when he was by the juniper tree. He rises and he eats. Then he says, rise again and eat because the journey is long. You are going to go in the strength of that journey. Sometimes God wants to feed you with scriptures that you are going to go in the strength of those scriptures, in the strength of those quotations, because that journey to your destiny, to your new level, is long from Juniper to Mount Horeb. So God always prepares the people for events that are about to happen. That event may be a global event. That event may be a family event. That event may be a a work event. That event may be a spiritual event. That event may be an individual event. Something that you are about to experience. God says, shall I hide from my child? But he prepares you. When you are ready, you can sail with God and get to new levels. The end time message is to get the bride ready and prepared for the rapture. We don't get ready by saying we are the eagles, there are chickens outside there, there is nothing. We must talk more about inside here, there is something. Inside here, um, uh, something is changed. I mean, my life is not the same. I see God in my life. I see changes in my family. I see a presence. I feel his presence. That is what matters in our lives. 
Preparation moments can be painful, but rejoice in those moments. You are showing your caliber. God is looking for a caliber of a sister, a caliber of a brother. So Moses, when he was before the burning bush, that was where God was equipping him. He could not just jump the burning bush and say, Moses, and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. He was going to die. So God was equipping him that his voice will speak and God will back it up. When he's speaking, it's now like deity speaking. So when, when Elijah was given the spiritual food, it was to prepare him for that spiritual journey. There is a quotation in the scripture that if you don't meet, you will never reach the level that you are desiring. You have to search the things that take you where you want to go. It's all provided, but you must search it and find it. So, when Joseph was put in the pit there, it was a trying moment. It, it, it was the process. If he, if he did not go to Egypt, it was going to be difficult for him to be who he became in Egypt. So the more, when he was in the pit, when he was, if he did not get betrayed by Potiphar's wife, uh, he was only going to be having good testimonies of being of good favor in Potiphar's house. He was not going to interpret anything there. So God moves you closer to what you are born for. In those moments, you must have an instinct to pick moments of purpose. You must have an instinct to pick moments that are defining moments. When they passed through the wilderness, it was a preparation moment to remove those that are not worthy of the promise and to, re to keep those who are worthy of the promise. So the wilderness of 40 years was a preparation so that they are able to obey the voice of God. So when the child Jesus was 12 years and was in the temple already giving the scriptures, that was a preparation. And from 12 years to 30 years, we don't hear about Jesus. He was hidden somewhere, God preparing him. Then we see him rising and then John says, Behold the Lamb of God. Something was happening in the background. Don't always like the front stage. Sometimes be somewhere where God is giving you power, giving you more prominence by, by hiding you in the spiritual to be able to meet the challenge. So Job, when he was passing through the preparation, it was for him to get the double of what was coming in his life. So for Elisha to be a continuation of the ministry of Elijah, he started by washing the hands of Elijah. Just starting by being in service, start by the humble things, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up for Joshua to be a continuation of the ministry of Moses, he had to be anointed by Moses, he had to follow obediently under Moses don't run away from discipleship and saying God is calling me to be a leader somewhere, start by discipleship start by humble ways and then God will lift you up so in the Isle of Patmos God was training uh, Apostle John in his ways to make him the see, lift, be lifted up to the great heights of heaven. So God has already prepared one way. The way now is just preparing you. He has prepared everything that you need. He has prepared a table. He has prepared your answers but he has to prepare you. You see, for Jacob he had to be prepared by God to be ready for his blessing. God was always with him but he had to prepare him to be ready. Joseph had to be prepared because he was a young boy, 17 years and immature. God had to prepare him. He learned also obedience like Christ through the things that he suffered. So don't rush what God is taking time to prepare you for. Have faith, it's worth the wait. Don't jump to say others are already doing this, I'm behind. I'm a... your, your, your trajectory is not like so and so. Just take God's path. God prepares a table in the presence of the enemy. But before he prepares the table, or when he prepares the table, he has to prepare you also. Because when you're not prepared, even if the table is prepared, when you see your enemy, you will run and leave the table. So you have to be prepared to say, 
to, to be steady surrounded by adversity and eat with appetite when you are surrounded by enemies. So, when you are unprepared, God cannot use you. God prepares you before he uses you. He says to those uh, of, of, of um, Philadelphia, he says, um, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you in the hour of temptation that shall come upon the earth to try them that dwell on the earth. There is an hour of temptation that what you kept shall keep you. The camels that you watered shall carry you. What you believed shall carry you. So what you invested time in, it shall carry you at that time. When there's a shaking time where politics is shaken, health systems are shaken, churches are shaken, marriages are shaken, there is one kingdom that cannot be shaken. God is the God who equips. But if you are too mobile, he can't equip you. He wants you to be still and know. Sometimes, like it is in Psalms uh, 23, I was reading Psalms 23, it says, he makes me lie down in, in, in pastures green. The, God wants you to be still sometimes. Amen. Don't be too busy running up and down. He wants you to lie down. You know, sometimes there was a time when doctors were telling me that rest. Uh, there was a time also they made me to, to lie down at matter day there. Uh, when I wanted to come out, they said, no, you rest here. That was some years in the days of COVID. So sometimes God makes you lie down. Even whether through sickness or whatever, but to show his care. You remember that, that uh, farmer who broke the, lamb, the foot of a lamb just to show care. So sometimes when you are too mobile, God can make you lie down so that he can show his care. He, he, he wants to keep you. It says about Jesus, this was challenging me so much that Jesus often withdrew himself to a lonely place and prayed. Amen. As God in flesh as he was to keep fellowship with the spirit that was in him, he had moments where he was alone. But when you are alone, you pull your phone and you are no longer alone. You are now with other girls who are dancing in your phone. You are now with other rumba people are doing. You are now with other reels that are unreal. Now, the, when you are like that, you are under 2,000 governors until the time appointed of the Father. He wants you to shed off certain natures. As long as you are having those natures, you are postponing your promotion. You are postponing your, your, your adoption. But God already has a table for you. He has your paper. He has something. To, he is ready to announce you to say, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But character, without, when you have no character, you cannot rule because um, character is, is not a, a victory. It's, a, it's, not, it's not a gift. It's a victory. There is no prayer line for adoption to say, oh Lord, I want adoption. Then a gifted person say, be adopted in Jesus' name. Receive character. No. You, if you want to pray, ask to pray for you to have character, we we'll just say, Lord, give them problems. Then the problems will give you character. <laughs> so that is character molding. I was showing you last time that a bamboo uh, shoot will stay sometimes two years underground. Unnoticed. Don't be, be ready to say, I have a gift. Can I, can I take the prayer line next Sunday? Can I take... The, uh, you want to start with 1,000. You have not prayed for one. And you are saying, no, in a dream, God says, I'm taking the prayer line. Be shut in with God in a secret. God himself shall announce you in due course when he has worked on you. Your gift will make room. It's not you making room for the gift. Now, that bamboo tree can be underground silently, but when it germinates, it is in the Guinness Book of, Book of Records for some of the species can grow up to 2.9 feet a day. And if you are observing, you can see it growing like that. But for it to be growing so fast and so visible, it took time. That's why even some of our buildings, like the, the tallest ones, Belch Khalifa, they are like bamboos. They are learning that these things work, these principles work. Sometimes when God is pruning you, it feels like God is, is chastising you. It's not chastisement. Chastisement is when you, are, you, you have done something wrong and he's correcting you that way. But pruning means he wants you to bear more. Meaning that the level that we have now, God is not seeing more out of you. 
in what as you are rejoicing that I'm bright, I'm super rich, I'm one in a million, God is not seeing the potential that is in you materializing. So he starts pruning you by allowing this and that and that. In your brokenness, there's an inner hidden power that rises to take control of the situation. So no matter what you are facing in life, God is still in control. This one thing I can say wherever I go, Jesus' love has never failed me yet. Let me tell you the secret to be used by God is when you are one with God. When God sees that this person is not after my gifts, but is after me. Is a man after my own heart. There are people who want gifts and authority so that they can use them and show that they are somebody. But God is not looking for such a person. God seeketh such that can worship him in truth and in spirit. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do and to teach Israel his statutes and his judgments. Before you teach somebody, let it be your heart, let it be your lifestyle, let it be your way of conduct, let it be your everything. Then you can then teach others because it's flowing. A preacher is not like someone who feeds, from a, who feeds a baby from a bottle um, of a prepared milk can give. We don't just prepare someone. It's like breastfeeding. It goes through our system. We leave it. It's part of you. You eat, then it becomes the sermon, then you give out the sermon like in breastfeeding. So, there were testing moments and preparatory moments for David. He could not just say Goliath and he says Goliath will go down without a backside where he's alone. No one was even there to record what happened with the lion. Some of your testimonies that are so dear to you, there were not even enough witnesses. But you know that it happened. You know that this gave me power to face this other challenge where there were no witnesses. But those moments alone where you don't quit because something you can never give up. God was training Peter. When he allowed him to almost sink, then he picks him. And then he, he keeps telling him, even after all his errors, he says, when thou art converted, strengthen others. God still kept, he kept seeing potential. Peter will fall, deny and do that, but God kept seeing something in Peter. No matter what you have done in your life, God keeps seeing something in you. No matter how many failures and how many mistakes, how many ups and downs, God keeps coming back to you with a sermon, keeps coming back to you with a dream, keeps coming back to you with inspiration and promptings of the Holy Spirit because he's seeing something that was in you before the foundation of the world. A gem of life, a part of, your, of the Savior that cannot be removed. So the wrestlings of this life uh, the scars that we pass through they show us the victory sometimes God causes what you are holding on to like the brook cherub to dry in this case in Joshua chapter 5 the God caused the manna to cease things that were getting answers the testimonies then the brook cherub dries because there is a new source for you God doesn't want you to bank on the old test. He wants it to almost look like he's trying so that he shows you that he's an ever-present help in time of need. Now, John Charit had to pass through his milling process, then become a millionaire. All these places like Google and Amazon, what started as humble, what so God is a way of taking you through the storms. The mighty men of David, as I'm about to close, um, they were prepared they pass through the preparation. You cannot just be uh, benign without a risk of jumping into the lion's pit. And many times, high risk is high returns. If you are not a risk taker, you, are, you don't have faith. Faith can jump where it seems like you are being finished there, but faith is jumping in with an answer already. There are situations where we've been so daring to say, I'm, even if I'm going alone there, I'm not alone. There is something that has been in my life all this time. When you pass through the fire, God is there with you. When you pass through all the scars like Paul, God is with you. There are hidden blessings in every struggle. 
when you come from your cave of Adulam, that was a training moment. When you pass through, you know, all these women, we had great children. Like Hannah, the child was a prophet. Like Sarah, the child was a great man of God. Like all those who were barren, like uh, Zechariah, the child was a prophet. Like uh, uh, Rachel, the child was a prophet. It means that temporary barrenness was a preparatory moment to teach them dependence that was going to be necessary in raising that child who is coming. So God is teaching you dependence so that when your testimony and your breakthrough finally comes, you have all the qualities to handle what has come to you. The prophet had to pass through his domes, Paul had to pass through the the thorn in the flesh, you to get ready for your next level, there is a preparation, there's a chiseling. There's when God does he sees something that He doesn't want in your life, He's not going to change His word about that. You're going to lose that thing for progress. If you don't lose that thing, you are losing time. Now, I'm in the process of becoming the best version of myself. We don't believe in spiritual retrogression. We are becoming worse. If there is a time you used to pray better than you are now, you are backslidden. If there is a time when you had more visitations than now, you are backslidden because our path, the path of the righteous is a shining light that shines more and more unto a perfect day. So if you are used by God, you must be used more and more as we get to the rapture. If you are visited by God, you must be visited more and more. What we are seeing temporarily in a measure, you must see in abundance as you get closer to the coming of the Lord. So, be who God wants you to be, not what others want to see in you. So, you must become what God intended. When you look at your life, is it what God intended? The status quo, the current state of affairs, is it what God intended? If it is not, who is to blame? It's because you are not available for the symphony of God. Don't be a discord in God's symphony. Be in tune. Align yourself with the purposes of God. The training is hard, but endure hardship as a disciplined soldier. Whatever it takes to be who, what you are born to be, you must go through it. It takes rough roads to lead to heights of greatness. So adversity is the university of life. You have to pass through the bad pains of your testimony as you rise to our feet. Are you ready to pay the price? Are you ready to shed off the things that are delaying you to get where you are supposed to get? Are you ready to say, Lord, if there be, search me, if there be a wicked way, remove it. Sometimes our own achievement cause us to have an arrival mentality which is detrimental to the levels we want to reach. Amen. Paul says, I don't count myself as one who has arrived. I don't count myself as one who has apprehended. But this thing I do, I forget the things that are past. And I press to the mark of the high calling. Where you are now spiritually. Where you are now in authority. Where you are now in the supernatural happenings. Let me tell you, it's a far cry to the potentials that God has put in you. But if you yield, I was reading that quotation where the prophet, where, where God says, this is not problem, he has nothing to do with this. He has yielded himself that I can speak through him. I'm God who created the heavens and Adam, the God who created the squirrels. You are speaking through him like God was taking over every fiber of his life. That's what I desire in my life. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. I don't want to be just a good preacher or, or someone who with a, a good gift. Yes, that is okay. But I want to be a good gift to the economy of heaven. Where heaven can trust you with power knowing that you won't abuse it. God can trust you with certain levels. God can trust you even with wealth knowing that you can't abuse it. You are already kingdom minded that nothing can sway you from the purposes of God. Nothing can sway you from what God has made you. Things that come, brother, we count it as dung. All, that, all my riches gain, I count by uh, but loss, but in poor contempt on all my pride. That is the kind of a person, not by theological speaking, when we speak these things, it's a good sermon, but let it be reality. 
When you hear these things, it's sweet in the mouth, but it's, it's tough in the process, in the belly. Now, all of us may like to be good engineers or good doctors, but are we ready for the process and the years? So there are years of investment for you to have certain hearing ear to hear the Spirit of God. There are certain years of investment for you to understand the spirit world and be channeled to be a channel of blessings to others. There are certain years and hours. How much? You see why America is a superpower? They invest trillions a year to ammunition. If you a, a greater part of their GDP goes to, to the military weapons. So as Zimbabwe, our budget for military weapons doesn't make us a superpower, but if we have a budget like America, we'll be a superpower. So your time budget on things of God, how much you are ready. But if you kneel down and pray a dry prayer that you, you yourself can say, ah, I don't think something came out of that. You're not going to have mileage. By that, you will depend on someone who stays in the closet. You depend on someone that you know is connected, but that's not how God designed things to be. There is one mediator between God and men, and you have access as the weakest of Christians when you are connected with God. Those things that take our time take our strength away. There is kinds of music and kind of things that you do when you are done. Your power to pray is not there. Your power to yawn. Now that is what the devil laughs at in your life. When you now say Satan, he says you saying Satan. That's as far as you can go to name his name, but to make him move, it takes a richer life. It takes your voice being begged by an inner voice of the spirit. When you say Satan, he hears God saying Satan. You will say Lord. <laughs> because something is speaking in you. But you can't rise from gossip from... Uh, that's why if you are people who pray, you must be temperate in all things. Otherwise, you pray and not have results if you don't do things, you don't filter things. If I'm a preacher, if you enter my car, you, go in, you must hear things that are edifying even if you are going all the way to Harare. But if you are in my car, then you start hearing me talking things that by the time I stand to preach, you say, yeah, 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 he's a sermon, he's good, he's gifted. But the life is already tangent. When you have a responsibility, when you name the name of the Lord to depart from all evil, as we all prepare to pray, let me tell you, your breakthrough is already ready. You are the only one who is not ready. Your new life is already ready. It, it doesn't really always take fasting and what it takes aligning yourself. If it means fasting to align yourself, it's all right. But al we need will alignment. Wait, your will is like the will of God is done in your life. When you are like that, when you speak and say mountain move, there is a force behind that speech. When you say cancer move, there is a brother who called me in the morning and said, brother, I'm going to you just spoke to me when I, I had wounds all over my body. And you say those wounds must dry. Overnight, a few days, those wounds are dried. I was not surprised. There are some things that happen and you are not surprised. There is a, if you pray for someone maybe with cancer and they come healed, it should not surprise you. <laughs> it should surprise you when they come sick because you, it's not normal. If it surprises you when they are healed, it means you are not expecting the healing. Amen. Of course, works of God are always amazing, but it amazes you within the, um, the confines of faith to say, I knew God will never fail me. Let me tell you this evening, as we all get to pray, God can never fail you. You can fail God by staying too long in your mountain when God is calling you. Are you ready to prepare? It takes not zero tips a day as an investment. If you are going to start from today to say I want to put something for my children in a savings account, 
and some days you don't put nothing, some months you don't put nothing, you'll be surprised that you have nothing. Every day put something to strengthen your inner man. Every day, don't wait, for, don't wait for a church fasting program. Don't wait for a church consecration week. Be ready. You don't know how long you live in this earth. So, every day must count. Let's close our eyes as we all pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have come to the end of this service. We are challenged in our spirit. We realize, Father, that are we really prepared for the rapture? Are we really prepared for the coming of the Lord? Are we prepared for the end times? Are we prepared for the oncoming storms? Are we prepared for things that shall happen in this earth? Are we prepared as sanctuaries, pure and holy? Are we prepared for our next levels? Are we prepared for the breakthroughs we are praying about? Are we prepared for the testimonies we are reaching, we are reaching out for? Are we prepared for a closer work with God? Are we prepared to be usable by God? I know your spirit wants to use us. Wants us, Father, to be so pure and holy. A church without spot or wrinkle. A church that is dependent on God. A church that hears from God. A church that is moving into a sphere where anything shall be possible. Are we prepared for the third pool? Are we prepared for the squeeze? Are we prepared for the climax? For that Mount Zion shutdown, are we prepared for that power that shall be released? Heavenly Father, if there be a wicked way in us, remove it. As individuals, we want to be more diligent. We want to be more vigilant. We cannot hinder ourselves anymore. We cannot stagnate ourselves anymore. We cannot suffer a spiritual plateau anymore. My heart is crying again for the waters of Bethlehem. Crying, Father, for levels and dimensions in the spirit where we cannot be limited anymore. We know the sin of Israel, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Father, we don't want to limit you. There is a call in the spirit. There is a high calling for the bride of Christ. There is a high calling for the believer in the end times. Realms of authority, realms of power, realms of the anointing, realms of supernatural visitations, realms, Father, of total obedience and total yielding to your spirit when we reach those levels I has not seen he has not heard what God has prepared for those who walk uprightly those who are ready to conform to be transformed to the image of God to be partakers of the holiness and the image of divine nature of Christ we bring our vessels enlarge our capacity like you did to Jabez Enlarge our prayer times. Enlarge our spiritual scope. Enlarge our preparedness. Prepare our soil, Father. That's why you created Adam from the soil to show that the landing ground of your seed must find a prepared soil. A body is thou prepared. Prepare us, O Lord. Prepare our youths. Prepare our young people. Many are praying and desiring things to happen but their lives are not prepared enough. They don't have esteem and good value for the things of God. They don't have any high level of discipline on things of God. Father, I know you want to bring many gifts among us. You want to bring your anointing upon us. Those who are walking in the way those who are wayfaring men, those who are tired of things of this world, the reason why that deep is calling, the reason why there is a desire, is because there is a power somewhere to answer that desire. Many times we wonder why our breakthrough seems to delay. We wonder why we seem to be in, in a roundabout where we are rounding about and rounding about this same mountain. Father, it's about matters of destiny. It's about matters of preparation. When we reach that level where God shall adopt us, when we reach that level where God is saying, this is my beloved son, my beloved daughter, and he places us in authority, as we are taught in the adoption series, 
that mountains will move everything will shake when that believer with authority steps in their position may brothers and sisters step into their position may the church of the living God step into their position where mountains shall move we are waiting and all nature is groaning waiting for such a moment heavens is waiting for such a moment help us father we want to allow your spirit to take preeminence in our lives we want to be usable use me jesus lord don't refuse me even if there's something humble for me to do i'll follow you there are some lord whose follow ground is rent already there are some whose hearts are already prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace they are saying not anymore in this level something is saying come up higher there are levels and spheres and dimensions and brackets and spots and mystic channels where men ought to live dimensions of the power of God dimensions of angelic visitations dimensions of the supernatural where the devil becomes a mere spectator where the devil doesn't know what to do with us father by that authority and power given unto us I challenge every demon to flee in the name of Jesus Christ I challenge every step on mountain Satan you are defeated we are a mighty army that is rising taking control taking charge say we know our God is alive our God is here to open a way where there seems to be no way our God is here to heal every sickness and I command every sickness to vanish here and online let it be healed instantly the same God of heaven is able to open a way is able to do super abundantly above what we ask as we pray believing you said what things ever we desire when we pray believing we shall have those things we thank you Jesus we are challenged in our spirits as your spirit said one time that I have many things to tell you but you cannot bear them now I believe there's many things that can happen in our lives enlarge us like jabbers that we can bear our season when it opens that we may be able to be worthy of the open doors that are opening be before us because I believe this is a season when doors of endless opportunities, endless possibilities shall open and those that know their God shall do exploits. It's a season of exploits. I want to see exploits, oh Father, in my life. I want to see exploits in my children, in the ministry. Times of dryness are over. Times of complaining are over. Father, we've been trained for so long now it's time for our ranks it's time for us to say for such a time as this we have come into the world you say the brother will say I give you rain and the rain will come in this drought moment father spare your children with great testimonies that father those who believe you in this time shall be blessed in this year more than in any other year before those who know their God those who have been prepared in the backside of the desert those who have been prepared in the Damascus road those who have been pre prepared in their junipers those who have been prepared in their airships those who have been prepared in their caves of Adulam when they rise in fullness of power in fullness of anointing and say Satan you are finished Satan, I command you. You evil spirits. I adore you in the name of Jesus. Let there be massive healings online. Let there be massive healings here. Even those who are in their homes. Even those who are passing in the streets. May the grace of God capture them. For amazing results. Astounding. Extraordinary testimonies. We are thirsty. 
as a deer painted for the waters something is crying in us for the waters of Bethlehem for the old time revival for the healing waters there is a fountain somewhere that nourishes a soul that is a thirst and you said oh ye who are thirst come to the living waters thank you Jesus we can feel your presence right now in this very atmosphere as we are dispensing every need and every desire overshadow your people never Lord Father to lose focus anymore never to have details from the enemy but keep me true Lord Jesus keep me true there is a race there is a level there is an anointing there is a release of power that is for those who are prepared for those who have eaten the book to prophesy again for those who have received the spirit to move under the anointing for those who are charged by your power for those who are quickened and translated in this tabernacle there are people that God is searching for that is saying press on my sister there is a new level in the spirit there is a new level if you are prepared to drink the cup if you are prepared for that baptism new levels of authority you shall speak things as they shall happen missing limbs shall be restored the spirit of God shall speak with accuracy for those who say a body has now prepared me prepare my body O oh Lord prepare my soul prepare my spirit to stretch to the anointing thank you Jesus may you visit your people once again we open the doors in our homes for the visitation we open the doors in our hearts for the visitation we're going to check whatever displaces you and kick it out of our homes as we end this service be with us transform us may our eyes see our faith materializing things that we have spoken we shall see them prepare us for our financial blessing prepare us for the rapture day prepare us for ministry prepare us for exploits prepare us to win Bulawayo I believe oh Lord, there is more ground to be possessed we worship you Father we thank you for your presence we thank you for your blessing we make a covenant with our hearts to pray more than we were praying to fast more than we were fasting to read more than we were reading to yield more than we were yielding take over in our lives in Jesus name God bless you. Keep that prayerful atmosphere. Remember to pray for me this weekend. As I shall be going to Bloomfontein. And I'll also be preaching in your film Sunday afternoon. Just stay in that prayerful atmosphere until something happens. God richly bless you. Amen. Easter time I'll be in UK then after Easter I'll be on the 7th of April we'll be having Pastor Kapisha from Zambia and some of our Zambian saints will be here so let's keep that prayerful atmosphere and prepare for more of God